Hello, and welcome to the Reiki Gem Wellness Channel. Today, we're going to be talking about synthetic or man-made stones that you may not know that they're synthetic because often these are marketed as genuine gemstones and how these gemstones affect your crystal healing practice. For those who have watched my videos before, welcome back. I appreciate your support and your curiosity to learn more about crystals and gemstones. And for those who are new to my channel, my name is Shannon and I'm a certified Reiki master and teacher and a certified gemologist. And I combine those skills and passions to provide you with the knowledge, tools, and opportunities to practice crystal healing in your daily life. So man-made stones, how is this different than working with naturally grown stones? Well, in your crystal healing practice, when you have a natural gemstone, like it was, it was conceived and heated and pressurized and grown and developed like under the earth. And it was under amazing pressure and there's a lot of earth energy that went into the formation of those gemstones. And even the way that they are mined affects the energy of the gemstone. So these have a lot of inherent energy that come through the creation process in the earth. So when you pick that up from the ground and you feel it, it has that within it. Man-made stones also involve heat and pressure, but a lot less time and no real connection with the earth energy. And so while they may be really beautiful and pretty, they don't really help a crystal practice at all. So I'm going to talk about some common gemstones that you may find in rock and gem stores that are sold as gemstones that are actually synthetic, lab created or man-made. And just a note that when you're looking for gemstones and you're not sure if something is um, natural, genuine or man-made, when you're looking at the listing or when you're talking to the seller, like these terms indicate that it's man-made. So lab created, synthetic, simulated, man-made, um, all of those will indicate that it's not a natural gemstone. The first stone that I'll be talking about is one that I actually do practice with. This is the exception to the rule um, among all of these gemstones I'm going to talk about today, and it is goldstone. This is a stone that was really popular, I want to say in the 70s, because my great grandmother had a ton of goldstone. And I don't actually have any of these gemstones I'll be talking about today. So I'll be overlaying some pictures to show you what they look like. But goldstone is a, an orange brown colored stone with a lot of little specks of what looks like glitter in it. It's very shiny. And as I said, my great grandmother had just my great great grandmother had a lot of goldstone jewelry. So I remember that when growing up. There's also blue goldstone, which is a really deep, dark blue. And it's really pretty as well because it looks like stars in the night sky. And then there's also green goldstone, uh, which is also almost black, a dark, deep forest green with the glitter speckles in it. I hear there's purple goldstone, but I've not seen it before. The creation process of goldstone is really interesting because I used to believe that it was glass that had little copper fillings, little copper shreds mixed in with it. And copper is a, a great energetic metal and it amplifies energies and it's really powerful. So if you have gemstones wrapped in copper, it really enhances their healing ability. However, I was wrong about the formation of goldstone. And 
the materials for glass and copper oxide are heated until all of that copper oxide is dissolved. And when it cools down, it develops these little tiny copper crystals all throughout the glass. So in the case of goldstone, there is some kind of creation and formation of something new when the gemstone is created. So when I do make goldstone jewelry or use goldstone, it's primarily for the properties of copper combined a little bit with the color of that goldstone, whether it's the orangish brown for the sacral chakra, blue for the third, third eye or the throat, and then green for the heart. So if you're curious about goldstone, you might want to get a piece or two and just hold it in meditation and see if it works for you. You know, this is one that I, I do tend to work with a little bit, not a lot, but as always, you know, hold the stone, feel it, see how it works for you. The next stone that we'll be talking about is called opalite. And it is a semi-translucent milky stone with an iridescent shimmer on the outside. And it's made to um, imitate opal. Now, this is just glass. We'll start off. It's, it's just pretty glass. There's nothing else really in it uh, or in the process of making it. Now there is a natural opalite, which is a natural stone, but it is green and it in no way looks like the man-made opalite. So you cannot confuse the two. And so if you're looking at opalite in the gem stores, just know that it is glass and while glass products are pretty, they don't carry any inherent healing energy. The next synthetic stone that I find really, really interesting is called Fordite. And this isn't even a, a gem stone. It's not glass. It is layers of paint and this stone came about in car companies, in car manufacturing factories. And it's also called, uh, let me see, Detroit Agate or Motor City Agate. And it's not a stone. But what happens is when they're painting the cars, uh, the excess paint runs off onto the floor and then it dries and then they paint the next set and then they paint the next set. And so they get layers and layers and layers of different colors of paint that make this really pretty swirly effect. And then people were taking that um, after they cleaned the floor of this paint slag and they were breaking it apart and making it into jewelry. And it is really pretty, but it has no healing benefits. Now, they do just make it now. It doesn't necessarily come from a manufacturing facility. They know how to just layer the auto paints to create the Fordite effects. The next stone that we're gonna be talking about is colored obsidian. If your obsidian is not black and it's transparent, then it is glass. Real natural obsidian, no matter what the type, is always based in black. So you have your original black obsidian, you have Apache tears, which are kind of semi-transparent um, black. Even mahogany obsidian, snowflake, rainbow, gold sheen, silver sheen, um, that all has a base of black, even though there are some other colors um, kind of influencing the look of the stone. Those are genuine obsidians. But if you get the blue, green, red, yellow, if it looks like glass, it is glass. Obsidian, as I said, always has a black base. 
There are no transparent colored obsidians. Those are man-made. Those are glass. So, but this brings us to a subset of that with a stone called Gaia stone, or also known as Helenite. Now this is a really pretty green stone that's often cut into gems, you know, for rings and pendants. And it is glass that is created from heating the ashes from Mount St. Helens. And, you know, that's, it's an interesting concept. I had to do some research on that to see if that was even factual, and it is. You know, apparently people that were working with the cleanup um, noticed that when this ash was heated, it turned into a, a dark green glass, which then they could cut and sell. However, I don't think there's any real way to find out if it's genuine. So if you are buying Gaia stone or Helenite, it tends to be pretty expensive and you could be buying the real thing that includes the Mount St. Helens ash, or it could just be green glass. You need to be really, really careful when you're buying Gaia stone and Helenite. Now about the healing properties, I think if you have a genuine piece of Gaia stone that is made from the ashes of Mount St. Helens, it is gonna have some energy linked to that volcano and that eruption and that event. However, you need to really be careful, like ask the seller where it came from, ask for certificates of authenticity. You don't, you know, there is a lot of potential for fraud with Helenite. So just be careful on that one. And then the final stone that we're going to be talking about is Andara crystals. This again is glass. It's glass. It is the leftover glass slag from glass factories. And while Andara crystals can come in many different colors and it's really, really beautiful. It has no inherent crystal healing properties. It doesn't have any special properties. Do not pay an arm and a leg for Andara crystals. Like it's beautiful. If you want to buy it for decoration, like go for it. it. It is really lovely. Like, you know, tumbled glass, beach glass, like glass is really pretty. However, glass itself doesn't really have any effect on crystal healing. And people really, they really sell the metaphysical properties of Andara crystals and they really charge a premium for it. So please don't. Don't pay just an enormous price for leftover glass slag. Don't. <laughs> So those are all the gemstones that I have to uh, review today, and I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask them in the comments. If there's another synthetic gemstone out there that you feel I should talk about in the future, also put that in the comments. What I didn't talk about today is um, synthetic stones of gemstones that we already know about, like fake amethyst or fake ruby. And yes, that is out there. It's not gonna have any healing properties. And just make sure that if you're buying it online, that it says natural, genuine, that it doesn't say lab created, synthetic, man-made, simulated. Um, those are um, signs that it's just glass. So thank you so much for joining me today to talk about man-made gemstones and their, you know, not so much crystal healing properties. Um, but again, if you have any questions, ask below. And if you are also interested in crystal healing and you'd like to learn more about different gemstones and their supportive benefits and do some guided meditations with gemstones, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and then you'll see whenever I post a new crystal healing video. Thank you.